Tonight on Home of the Brave, a timely counterpoint to the first story in this broadcast. While the controversy over Trent Lott's remarks ricochet across the country, two veterans of World War II have found each other, and they're sharing what they have found with a generation of youngsters who knew that other time only through history books. NBC's Bob Faw tonight on Black and White and Together. Submissions. And then we the embrace no was a long time coming. And Herb Heilbrunn and John Lear, and childhood neighbors, <laughs> separated for a lifetime, now reunited. Okay. In 1944, First Lieutenant Heilbrunn was flying bombers over Europe, escorted back to base by the fabled Tuskegee Airmen, an all-black group of pilots, including First Lieutenant John Lear. If it were not for him, for the Tuskegee Airmen, for their courage, their ability, and their devotion to duty, I would not be here today. Never once in 1,500 missions did the so-called red-tailed angels lose a bomber they escorted, though they had to fly planes white pilots had used earlier and discarded. We would like to have had the latest equipment, but since we didn't get it, we did the best with what we had. What he did and all the medals he won meant little, though, when John Lear returned home and encountered a white stranger in Memphis. My God, he said, look at your nigger officers, he said. <laughs> And two of them got wings on. He said, I'll be damned. He said, I've killed a lot of niggers, but I've never killed any nigger officers. I'm going to kill you niggers. Back then, Tuskegee Airmen learned, they could be first-class soldiers and still be second-class citizens. Back then, the military was also segregated, so Herb Halbrin never got a chance to thank any of those black pilots until seven years ago when, uninvited, he attended one of their reunions and introduced himself to John Lear. And I said, I don't know if you were in the air with me or not, but I'm going to give you a hug and say thanks for what you did, because I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. Not only had they flown together twice, they also were amazed to discover that 67 years earlier, they had been students together. Yeah, I got out Miss Pitchell's third grade picture, and, and here uh, I see a black boy I'm standing right next to. And I sent the picture to John, and I said, if that fellow's you, this thing's getting pretty scary, and it was John. Now, when the two 82-year-olds meet with students, Lear reminds them how much more still needs to be done. The only time I will ever feel that we haven't been shortchanged is when I see all black Americans given equal treatment. Halbrun, though, <laughs> emphasizes how much has already been accomplished. That they can see that, that a, a white man and a black man can have a friendship that's really true and not something on the surface. And each meeting ends the same way, with a hug that is 50 years late and timeless. Bob Fall, NBC News, Cincinnati. They met when they were flying side by side on a mission of war. And now they're flying side by side on a mission of racial peace. That's Nightly News for this Monday. I'm Tom Brokaw.